So I woke up today and I got people hitting me up. They're like, yo, Reggie, you got to talk about this Russell Westbrook, Patrick Beverly situation. So I'm like, okay, what's going on, man? Like what's, what's, what's happened, right? Since I've been asleep, ladies and gentlemen. And I come across this clip from Patrick Beverly and I was just, I, I, listen, I died laughing. I'm not going to lie to you guys. Russell Westbrook walks in. Hey, hey, Rusty. Rusty, I told Rusty, yeah, yeah, I beat you to the gym today. Yeah, I beat you to the gym today, Rusty. You're the reason why I'm in here. You posted me up first play, got to end one. Didn't forget. Rusty goes, hey, Pat, Lakers win. I'm on my ring. Right? I ain't gonna lie, Russ. Boy, we gonna be suited and booted, boy. I'm gonna be right there waiting on that ring. At the White House. So, this was very funny to me, right? Because Patrick Beverly was the same guy who got traded from the Lakers. And as soon as he found a new team with the Chicago Bulls, this is what he said about the LA Lakers. Bulls, 11 seed right now in the Eastern Conference. And we played the Lakers twice. Wow, is that gonna mean something a little bit more to you? What? What? We played the Lakers twice. What are the emotions gonna be like going into that? Like what's going through your head? Knock them out the playoffs. Yeah, that's what the fuck I like to hear. Yeah, like <laughs> we gotta get in the playoffs, so excuse us. Like a little scooch. Elbow. <laughs> <laughs> So, like I said, just a few weeks ago, man, Patrick Beverly's whole mission in life was to knock the Lakers out of the playoffs now that the Bulls got knocked out. And he's chilling at the crib, watching the playoffs like the rest of us. Now, if the Lakers win, Patrick Beverly and Russell Westbrook want a ring. This is unbelievable, ladies and gentlemen. Because, number one, why would Russell Westbrook want a ring from the Lakers when as soon as he got on the Clippers, he was talking about how wanted he felt by the Clippers? I mean, the way things ended with the Lakers, ladies and gentlemen, if you guys remember, Russell Westbrook got into it with the head coach, Darvin Ham, the day before he got traded. So now Russell Westbrook gets eliminated by the Phoenix Suns as a member of the Clippers and, and now he wants a championship ring with the Lakers? I mean, what are we talking about, man? And Patrick Beverly, don't, don't, listen, don't even get me started on Pat Bev. Listen, you don't even, you, I, I, could, I, I could at least, ladies and gentlemen, make an argument that Russell Westbrook deserves a ring if the Lakers were to win it. Patrick Beverly, there's no argument really to be made, man. I mean, at one point in the season, bro, you were averaging like four points a game, right? So, unbelievable to me, ladies and gentlemen, that either one of these guys would think that they deserve a ring from the Lakers, number one. And number two, y'all were the same dudes just talking shit about the Lakers but now that both of y'all are eliminated and you're watching the Lakers, now you want a championship ring. Unbelievable. Now, here is what Skip Bayless had to say, ladies and gentlemen, about this entire situation. The operative word here is deserve, and he does not deserve because he was, to me, the biggest reason that they were on the way to missing the playoffs. And it was a huge move, a sweet move, a move that I thought made Rob Palenka the, the runaway leader for executive of the year, which he did not win because, again, you look at the big picture, what Sacramento did, okay, I, I got it. But, but this was some earth-shaking maneuvers right. that he made because you and I talked for weeks, if not months, about can they get out from under Russell Westbrook? And you, you were you were out of your mind about it on a right. daily basis. Mm -hmm. And you thought there was no way out. No. And Palinka found a way out through Utah, but it required giving up 
the first of their two future first round picks. It was the 2027 that's lightly protected. Mm -hmm. Voila, he did it. Yeah. And they, they went ahead and cut bait with Pat Beth, which I thought he had become such, he's a showman, he, he's a huge personality, and he'd become a little bit of a distraction, especially for the younger players. Right. So the point was, you cleared the decks of both Russ and Pat Beth, and then all of a sudden, you, you've gotten Hachimura, and you bring in D'Angelo Russell, and you get Jared Vanderbilt, who's turned out to be one of the best perimeter defenders yeah. at six feet, eight, eight inches tall yes. in the league. You brought in Malik Beasley. I know he's hit and miss from three, but still, I think he's been more of a plus than a minus. But it also, with the, the when you release Pat Bev, you elevated Austin Reeves into the starting line. You did. Bingo. And you also got Mo Bamba, who has not contributed yet, but I think he will at some point contribute. I, I think he is a talented, very young man. Okay, so what do we see here? What qualified Russell Westbrook for a ring with these Lakers? <laughs> and again, we're presuming they're going to go win, go ahead right. and win the ring, but we just, that's for the sake of this conversation, we have no yeah. choice. Okay. When Russ left this basketball team, it was 25 and 30. It was five games under 500. It was mired in 13th place in the Western Conference. Right. That's not very good. No. And you, we all thought that the Lakers were way better than that. Mm -hmm. Once he walked out of the door, once he was sent packing, the Lakers finished the year 18 and 9 on an 18 and 9 run. So that's that's nine games over 500. And guess what? That record post Russ was the best record in all the Western Conference. And they vault up from 13th place to seventh place. Well, I, I think I just showed you how much of a liability Russ had become right. and how when you cleared the decks, the heavens opened and everything fell back into place. The pieces started to fit. Mm -hmm. LeBron was a much happier player because he's the highest IQ player in basketball and it was driving him crazy. He was pulling out whatever hair he has left on his head <laughs> because Russ is a lower IQ player who is a turnover machine. Yes. So what did Russ do for the Lakers this year? He played 52 games. He, he, the, the numbers look pretty good, 16, 6, and 8. That's why Pat Bev in the same podcast made the case that he thought Rush should have been the sixth man of the year, 16, 6, and 8. But if you look a little deeper into those numbers, as you well know, he shot only 42% from the right. floor. He shot 29.6% from three, which was the second worst in the entire NBA at that point when he left the Lakers and 66% from the free throw line was the fourth worst free throw percentage of the qualified players. Okay. okay, but what did he also do? He, at that point, led the entire NBA in turnovers per 36 minutes. Okay. He, he hadn't played enough because he was then, he's not six starting minutes. anymore, he was just six minutes. So his minutes had fallen, what, about four minutes a, a night from what he was right. the year before. So the point was, if I add up second worst three point, fourth worst free throw, first worst, in turnovers per 36, man, that's liability. And I think we all agreed it got so bad that at what's now the crypt, the, the, the fans are, are like, oh no, every time he goes up into his shooting motion, right? No. Well, I, I, I think that, that I just demonstrated painfully clearly right. that they were way better without Russ. They were. Okay? So if, if you want to do the classy thing and give him a ring, I got it. But in my mind, it's a cubic zirconia ring that you're giving him because <laughs> it's got a big asterisk on it, right? <laughs> you so, ladies and gentlemen, you guys just heard what Skip Bayless had to say, man. And to be quite honest with you, man, Russell Westbrook, even if the Lakers do win, man, he should not want a ring from the Lakers, man. The way it ended with the Lakers, he should just go ahead and move on, man. And Patrick Beverly, listen, bro, you do not deserve a championship ring if the Lakers win it. I'm sorry. But what I want from you guys is to come into the comments down below and let me know what you thought about this entire situation. And I'm going to catch you guys on the next one. This was another installment of The Locker Room. Peace.